Hey guys, what's up? It's Casey. If you don't know me, I am an ER tech at a level one trauma center. I've been working there for a little bit over a year now, and I thought I would give you guys some advice on some ER new tech tips. That's a mouthful. But anyway, these are just some tips I think are good to know for anyone who's starting out as a tech. Um, things that I definitely wish I would have known before I started. Um, so I have got my iPad here and I've taken the time to like really think about it and write out some notes. So if you see me looking down, I'm just referencing my notes and let's go ahead and get on started. So my first tip for all you new techs is don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you're new, everyone was new once, we all think we have those dumb, stupid questions. There is no such thing as a dumb question in medicine. You don't want someone to assume you think you know something and then come to find out in a critical situation that you don't. So do not be afraid to ask questions. Most hospitals, when you start, you're on an orientation period and you're given a preceptor. And that preceptor is someone who is supposed to, you know, show you the ropes, show you how to do things. So really take advantage of that preceptor ask all the questions like do not be afraid to ask a question like i said everyone has been new once and you want to make sure you know what you're doing so asking questions i think is key another thing i want to talk about is don't be intimidated by the department like it takes time to get oriented to the department so just so you guys know like i said i've been working in my er for over a year and i still don't know where stuff is you know, that's the one thing about working in an ER is we kind of have a little bit of everything, you know, like tool wise and just like stuff because we <laughs> see so many patients that need certain things. Um, and so sometimes we'll get a patient and a nurse or doctor will ask me for a very specific tool or um, like a very specific something and I'm just like, what the heck? And I find out that we have that. So don't be intimidated by all the things your department might have. And especially being a tech, you're expected to like stock those things and know where those things are. That just takes time. So don't be intimidated by that as well as like the layout of your department can also be kind of intimidating and just realize that takes time and don't get overwhelmed and think that you have to know everything overnight. Like I said, I've been working in my department for a year and I'm still learning things. Another thing is don't be intimidated by your coworkers. I know it can be super hard to start working in a new department and there are like close friend groups and whatnot and that can be really hard to just kind of feel like you're on the outside and the newbie. But just know that again, that takes time and people will start to get to know you and you'll feel like you fit in. I know for a while you feel like you're on the outside because like everyone knows each other, feels so comfortable, but you'll fit in soon. I know that was something that like I was kind of angsty about. Another thing you want to try to do is be precepted by multiple people if possible. So as I was saying, when you're new, you're normally put on an orientation period and you're given a preceptor. Your preceptor will like show you around, um, show you the ropes, like I said, kind of break down what you're supposed to be doing at work. It's great if you can have more than one person precept you because obviously people do things differently as well as um, some people have been working longer than others so they know other they know certain things about the department another preceptor might not know. So it's really good if you can um, to get precepted by multiple people and don't be afraid to ask like your manager or whoever is responsible for your preceptor. Like don't ask your preceptor, oh, I want someone else to precept me. Like tell your manager like, hey, it's really great that so-and-so has precepted me, but do you think someone else could precept me today? Something like that. While we're on the topic of orientation, so hopefully um, your preceptor will take you on a full hospital tour um, not just like a tour of your department. If they don't ask for one, um, just because you probably are gonna have to go other places in the hospital, you're gonna have to transport patients, um, take patients to get images, go to lab, go to pharmacy. You wanna know where all those things are in the hospital. So ask for a full hospital tour if they don't give you one. And again, don't think you need to memorize everything. Um, my whole thing about my hospital, because my hospital is super confusing, it was built in parts, so like certain floors are not the same floors in other wings. Um, so my biggest thing is just knowing 
like, okay, this unit is on this floor or the pharmacy is on that floor. Like as long as I can get to what level I need to be on, we will get there if that makes sense. Um, another thing you should ask your preceptor or anybody, how to drive the damn hospital beds. Cause let me tell you, you think it's intuitive, but it is not. Um, those hospital beds can be really hard to drive. Um, and if you know how to drive them, it makes it 10 times easier. And I remember the first time I ever had to transport a patient, they were like, hey, will you transport this patient? I was like, sure. And I figured it would just be like, oh, you push the bed and you go. But no, there are some things you need to know before you push that bed and you don't wanna look like an idiot in front of the patient and then they're like, oh my God, this new person is pushing me around and they do not know what the heck they're doing. So have someone show you how to drive the hospital beds. Seems dumb, but you should know. Another tip is if you get blood on you or you have to clean a large amount of blood, um, and when I mean on you, I mean your clothes, just so you know. <laughs> Hydrogen peroxide is your best friend. As you can see, I'm wearing these beautiful green scrubs and they have been completely trashed and hydrogen peroxide gets the blood out without ruining the dye of your clothes. So like I said, hydrogen peroxide is great. Um, obviously, if you're cleaning it up at work, follow your hospital's protocol on like how to clean things. But working in the ER, some of our trauma bays get trashed and the best way to clean up large amounts of blood instead of using like your hospital's purple wipes is to just spray some hydrogen peroxide on it. Gets it all up, great. Another thing you should know that if it's not covered in orientation is know what your top responsibilities are. Um, a lot of times as a tech, you have like 10 or 12 responsibilities that you're supposed to be doing. And it can be hard when you're new to know which ones have higher priority. So for example, um, at my hospital, I'm expected to clean rooms, um, assist with patient care and stock. I would say those are like the three main jobs I have. And it's important to know like of those three jobs, which should I be prioritizing? Um, so definitely just ask your preceptor that every department's different. Maybe you work in a department where you don't have to clean rooms. If you do, let me know because I would like to work there. <laughs> but yeah, so definitely just know what jobs you're supposed to be prioritizing as well as like ask them what should you be doing like during your downtime. Like there's definitely sometimes in ERs where things ebb and flow, like you'll be super busy and then you'll have downtime. Ask them what you guys should be doing in that downtime. Because when I first started, I did not have the best orientation. I was just kind of like thrown in. And so I was just like chilling during the downtime, hanging out. And then I saw all the other techs doing stuff and I was like, oh, I should probably be doing that, you know? So it's good to have someone tell you instead of you chilling at the nurse's station, seeing everyone else working, and then you're like, oh, maybe I should go do that. <laughs> Another thing that goes along with the downtime is um, something I personally like to do is go around all the nurse's stations and ask the nurses, do you need help with anything? Um, so one of the things that I have access to is like the tracking board where we have all of our patients and we can see if like an EKG needs to be done, if they need to do a straight stick. Those are things that as a tech I'm allowed to do. But sometimes there are things that the nurses need help with that are not on that tracking board. So sometimes I just like to go around and ask the nurses, hey, do you need anything? Maybe they just need you to like help a patient to the bathroom, you know, do something like that. And that's not on the tracking board. That really helps the nurses and it makes you look like a great tech because you're like going around and all the nurses are like, oh, I like her. She's always willing to help out, you know? So another thing you should know is that there is a big difference between day shift and night shift. So if you haven't already figured out what shift you wanna work, um, basically the simple of it, day shift, you tend to have a lot more staffing. So you're gonna have a lot more of like ancillary staffing. Is it ancillary or auxiliary? Someone let me know. <laughs> um, but you're gonna have basically extra staffing. You're gonna have people like PT, you're gonna have administrators, you're gonna have extra transporters because most people want to work during the day. 
on night shift, there tends to be less staffing, which as a tech, I actually like that because that allows me to be more hands-on. During the day, if there's all these extra physical therapists around, respiratory therapists, like if there's a lot of extra staff to help the nurses, then as the tech, you're less likely to be hands-on. That doesn't mean you're never gonna be hands-on, but it means you're less likely to. Whereas night shift, we don't have that ancillary, auxiliary, whatever you call it, that extra staffing. So they depend on the techs more to do patient care, which is what I personally enjoy. That's my favorite part of being a tech is to getting to interact with the patients. So I like that. As well as if you work night shift, you make that money, okay? You get what's called a differential. Um, if you don't know working nights, they do pay you more because you are working odd hours that no one else wants to work. So that is another thing to note. Um, I did wanna mention as a tech, sometimes you're lucky and you can work something called a mid shift. So just check with your hospital and see what they allow. So my ER, they basically take any hours from me they can get. And so I don't have to work a typical 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. I can work something called a mid shift and I can just pick up some hours in the middle of the day toward the end of the evening. And that way I can still make that like night pay for a couple of my hours and not like be on a, a whack schedule. So definitely check to see if you can work partial shifts. So instead of full 12 hour shifts or mid shifts. And that way you can like make that money without kind of messing up your schedule. Or if you just want to commit to that night shift life. You guys know that's where I'm at. If you don't know me, I'm a night shifter. If you can't tell by how I'm explaining night and day shift. No shame to the day shift. We love the day shift. We love you guys. Um, but I am, I'm a night shift kind of woman. I love it. Love that money. <laughs> Another thing is do not be afraid to ask to watch a procedure or to jump in ask to jump in on something if there's something interesting happening in the department. Obviously you want to do this if you have the time. If the department is super crazy and hectic and you have to do 12 other things, it's probably not the best time to ask if you can watch a procedure. Um, but that is a really cool thing about the ER is a lot of procedures come in and you get to see a lot of like specialty docs come down and do consults and do the procedures in the ER. Um, so if you do have the time, don't be afraid to ask the doctor or ask the nurse, whoever is doing the procedure, can I watch this? Um, I'm super lucky. I work at a teaching hospital, so they almost always say yes. I've actually never had anybody say no. And most nurses, doctors, they know what it's like to be new and for you to like see all this and get excited to see something that they do five ten times a day you know like for them it's mundane but for you it's super new and exciting and they love to see that like hunger and that drive um to learn and so i think that that is one of the best things about being a tech is you get to be exposed to so many things and you just get to learn so much you get to just be a little sponge um, so definitely don't be afraid to put yourself out there and say, hey, oh, you're doing this procedure. Can I please watch? You know, I mean, the worst thing they're going to say is no. And then you go about your day. But yeah, guys, I hope these tips helped you. If you guys have any questions that I didn't answer, please drop them in the comments below. If you guys don't know, I actually do vlog when I'm at work. So I will link a couple of those videos and I hope you guys check them out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.